Hello and welcome back to the Canadian Money Roadmap Podcast. I'm your host, Evan Newfeld. Today, we've got a short little episode here where I'm going to be talking about some things that you can do when you feel stressed or overwhelmed with your money. I wanted to keep this episode short because people that are stressed or overwhelmed with money do not need a one hour podcast to solve some things. I just had a few quick ideas based on something that I watched recently, and I hope that it'll be valuable for you if you are ever feeling overwhelmed or stressed out about your financial situation. So a few weeks back, my wife and I, we watched a documentary on Netflix called Stutz. And that's a guy's last name, Phil Stutz. He is a a psychologist, I believe. And he is maybe a therapist is a better way to describe him. But Jonah Hill, the actor, he made this documentary to showcase some of the techniques that have been used in his therapy sessions in the hopes that it would be able to help other people. And so one thing that stood out to me was this concept that he called your life force. So personally, when you feel stuck, when you feel overwhelmed with personal problems, feeling powerless, one of the things that he says that always works is working on your life force. Maybe this is a little bit granola here. I don't know another way to describe it, but that's what he called it. But he said that these are very practical things. It's first your relationship with your physical body. So if you work on these kind of things, you'll start to feel better. So starting with your physical body, getting exercise, eating well, getting enough sleep. If you can do all of those things first, you will start to feel better. I'm sure all of us can feel that same way. I know staying up late, watching a lot of TV, eating junk food, kind of feels good in the moment, but the opposite is always going to be true, where if you get exercise, you eat well, and you get enough sleep, you are going to feel better. So part of your life force, starting with that. Next, your relationship with other people. When people get depressed, they start to pull away from people. He he describes it like a ship disappearing over the horizon, but your relationship with others pulls you back. So the, the key in that case is you taking the initiative by reaching out to people. Even if you don't want to, you're going to start to feel better. It will affect you. And third, he kind of describes it like a pyramid. I'm always careful to talk about pyramid related things in, in finances, but the highest level on this life force pyramid is your relationship with yourself. And, and, and this is the hardest thing that you can work on, but as part of your life force, anyways, he describes the ability to, to write and journal because that it kind of acts like a mirror. When you start writing, things will come out that are reflecting what's going on inside your brain. And you can kind of come to terms with that yourself. So when it comes to your money, if you're feeling stuck or depressed or unsure of what to do next, this is what I would call your financial life force or just three things that you can focus on to help you kind of move forward and get some progress on some of the things that you feel stuck on. First thing, your financial life force. First thing that you want to do is take a look at your cash flow. That's a maybe a bit of a jargony term, but it's essentially just knowing where your money is going every month. Assuming you have income, that's money coming in, and you definitely have expenses, that's money going out. All you want to do At this stage, the first thing that you want to do is just track it. Don't do anything with it. This isn't budgeting. It's very simple. Just track it. See where your money is coming in and when your money is going out. So many problems can be solved by just simply understanding where your money is already going before even doing a budget. So budgeting is the next level of this where now you tell your money where to go instead of figuring out where it went. But first, you got to figure out where it went. So once you have that, it can really take a, a lot of stress off of you because at least you know you're not in the dark. Yes, you can just say, ah, everything's expensive. I got kids and groceries. Everything's going up and my car broke down or whatever. It's like, but you, if, let's just get clinical and really analytical with it. Just track it. You, so you can do this on your spreadsheet. Every bank allows you to export your transactions And actually, most of the big banks here in Canada have apps that will do this for you. Mint is another app you can do. Any budgeting app will let you do this. But just track your spending every month. That is the first thing that you can focus on to improve your financial life force. Okay, so once you've kind of done that and once you've kind of worked towards a budget, you can kind of see, okay, these are some places where I'm overspending. I don't maybe need that subscription Oh, I didn't realize I was spending money on that. You know, all these different things. I suspect that once you've gone through that, you could find 
in your own budget, in your own cash flow, places where you can find 25 bucks. Anybody can find 25 bucks. For most of you, you can probably find a whole lot more than that, but leads me to step number two. So first one is cash flow, figuring out where your money's going every month. Number two, let's start growing something. So this is investing some money. So maybe you found 25 bucks through going through your cash flow. Even if you have 25 bucks, once you've done your cash flow assessment, then you can have an investment plan where you're going to do the same thing every month, regardless of what your dumb friend is saying, regardless of what the market is doing, regardless of what the Globe and Mail is saying for top stock picks for your retirement, whatever. It's all garbage. Find something, find something simple, find something diversified and move on. The point of this stage here is growing. The problem with investing is that your balance will ebb and flow. So what you want to do is track the number of shares or units you own instead of the dollar amount. This number will keep going up and keep you motivated to get going. The dollar amount will not always go up. And so that can be a really challenging thing for people. And that can be a, an area of focus that really limits motivation. It's like, oh, I'm investing every month and the dollar amount keeps going down. That will happen from time to time for sure. So have a system for keeping track of the number of shares of the mutual funds or ETFs or whatever that you're buying and track that every single month so you can see that number going up over time. I know this sounds silly and it may, might be a little bit ridiculous, but you know, even the idea of paying off debt, seeing a number go down, like paying off debt for a lot of people doesn't feel as good as seeing something increase. So this step of growing something is much more motivating in my experience. Even if it's smaller dollar amounts, you can still see progress and growth by starting to invest something every month. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it's got to be something. If you're already doing those first two things, you're keeping track of where your money's going and you're investing some money every month and you're still feeling stuck or stressed or something rather, you're already doing a lot of good things with it. So the third one here, I would say it's probably due to your relationship with money. So I would recommend the third step here of giving, giving some money away. It doesn't have to be a ton. Maybe again, that same 25 bucks. But my challenge to you is to look around and observe others around you. This isn't traditional financial planning advice here necessarily, but if you're a person who has the technology and financial means to be able to own a smartphone that you're listening to this podcast on right now, you will easily be able to find someone in your community or your city who is worse off than you. And so giving money away brings us back to a reality and releases the grip that money can have on us. It's truly a psychological exercise in generosity and thankfulness. I'm not teaching this in the CFP program, but this is a personal challenge to you. Have some fun with it. You can find any organization that you really connect with and matches a need that you see in the world. This isn't necessarily handing money over to someone on the street, but you can find an organization. They would be glad to sit down with you and, and connect. And it doesn't have to be much, but I guarantee that you will start to feel better. Once you put your own financial picture into perspective and giving something away to somebody else, that feeling of more and that constant feeling of you never have enough, it kind of starts to disappear. So I, my personal challenge here would be that would be the third thing that you could focus on if you're feeling overwhelmed with the markets or anything like that. Plus, you also get a tax credit for it. <laughs> so it's actually cheaper than you'd expect if you come up with 25 bucks and you give it away. You get some of it back when you file your taxes. So that's pretty good. So this is a really short, non-traditional episode here where these are three things that I think that you can do in my experience that if you're feeling stuck with your money, start by keeping track of your cash flow. Know where your money's going every month. Then from there, start an investment plan or even a savings plan, I guess you could put it into a high interest savings account too. Just put some money away on a regular basis, a small amount now that you've been able to account for some of that by tracking your cash flow. And then finally, try giving some money away. Small amounts, large amounts, whatever. This is the psychological benefit and a tax benefit that you're going to have by thinking of others and putting others first. It's really unique, but when I have clients and even in my own life, when this has been the case, I've heard some really cool stories of people really changing their mindset about money when they start to think about 
others and how well off we are, largely as Canadians and those of us that have been blessed with a whole lot of financial and material wealth in the grand scheme of things. So let me know what you think. My contact info is in the show notes. Send me an email if you've, if you've worked on your money life force this week. Give it a try and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Canadian Money Roadmap Podcast. Any rates of return or investments discussed are historical or hypothetical and are intended to be used for educational purposes only. You should always consult with your financial, legal, and tax advisors before making changes to your financial plan. Evan Neufeld is a certified financial planner and registered investment fund advisor. Mutual funds and ETFs are provided by Sterling Mutuals, Inc.